Yeah, I mean, for the last 18 months, we've had to fine-tune the economy as we were going through that crisis. And now the recovery here is very strong. It's actually one of the strongest of the G7 countries. But that recovery risks being stopped, altered by inflation, because as you rightly pointed out, the energy costs are soaring. So the idea behind these handouts that have been given to the poorer part of the population in France is to make sure that this and kind a of bout of inflation doesn't stop the recovery. But beyond that, I think that hopefully this inflationary pressure is going to be short-lived. Beyond that is really how we want to make sure that France both tackles recovery, strong growth, and employment keep on falling. We now have an employment that hasn't been so low for 15 years. That's good. But also addressing environmental and technological transitions. So it's really hard to you know, unify these two challenges of the post-health crisis recovery. And the recovery here in France has been stronger than expected this year. We expect about 6% uh, this year. But, of course, it was the whatever-the-cost policy by the government that helped this rebound. But that is really the question how this will be paid back because the deficit has really rised. And you're the chair of the Economics Affairs Committee here. So is that going to be a risk for the future? Yeah, I mean, I'm glad we spent whatever it took to save the economy, but now we're moving from whatever it costs to who's going to pay and how we're going to pay. Our bet is that growth, strong growth, is going to be making most of the payment of what we've had to pay for to make sure that the economy was saved. But we're also going to have to tackle public savings. We are, we are going to have to make sure that the, the civil service, the public service in France, remains more and more efficient every year. We have to make sure that the pension is being tattled because that's the first uh, expenditure that we have to do here to yeah, make sure that pensions are being paid, yes, but that probably people are going to have to work more to make sure that those pensions are still being paid in the future. So lots of challenges ahead for sure. Emmanuel Macron arrived as a disruptor on the French political scene. You yourself joined politics to join La République En Marche uh, in 2017. It feels like things haven't, the Big Bang is still there and there's not a reconstruction really of the uh, traditional political parties here in France. Where will the main challenge come for Emmanuel Macron in the next election? Is it still going to be the far right? Probably. I mean, as you said, it's very hard. You know, the whole political spectrum was literally shattered to pieces by the 2017 election, and it still hasn't recovered yet. So the traditional left is in disarray, it's divided. The traditional right hasn't found their ground yet, especially on the ideological front. They don't really know what they're standing for. And in front of that, yes, the extreme right is still quite strong. The angst, the, the anger, the fear is still very present in the, in the French political landscape. So for us, the main challenge is again to unify, to show that optimism can prevail after a big crisis, to make sure that we can build France by unifying the whole spectrum of, yes, the French political landscape, but also the kind of French people that we face with, you know, again, the urban cities, the territories, the women and the men, you know, the people coming from minorities that are still facing discriminations here. So it is going to be about dividing versus uniting, pessimism versus optimism, and we have to embody, you know, being still the new kid in the block, you know, Emmanuel Macron came from nearly nowhere five years ago, so I think it's still, he can embody modernity, newness, as well as unity.